Lil Bucks, born in North Philly but raised in West Philly, represents 60th and Lansdowne in the Carroll Park section of Philadelphia. Just to orient ourselves, I did a story on Lil Bucks uploaded August 27th, 2021. In that video, I documented the rise of the young lyrically skilled rapper, but to also show my fear that he was headed down the wrong path. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh. I feel bad, Lil Lil got scorched, uh. Duke got through in the water, uh. <laughs> Chill. Hey, bro, I'm gonna write to the joint now because y'all drawn on. Oh, there's no get over. You got nine millimeters, I got big choppers. We them young. Bucks is probably the youngest rapper I've covered on this channel, so I can't be too hard or critical of him. But his story is one of devastation and trauma, and in some of the most important years of a young man's life. Going back to his childhood, Bucks played football for the Parkside Saints and moved to West Philly when he was seven. In some of the most cliche set of circumstances, his father was arrested when he was 11 and left him to look to other men in the neighborhood for guidance. 11 year olds aren't the best at looking for role models most of the time and he turned to the streets for guidance. Now, the streets can give you knowledge and street smarts, but if you're not careful, you could become fully entrenched and sucked into a life that may not be built for you. O to the four mainly beats with a set called 616, which is 61st in Jefferson and 64th in Lansdowne. It's almost impossible to trace the origins of this beef to the beginning, but one name you'll hear a lot is Bro Bro. Oh, yeah, I walked in the floor with a Draco. You don't want to be like Bro Bro. Tell him lay low for that. She get away. Now she gotta go up. Bucks over the last few years have lost numerous friends to gun violence. On one hand, losing friends at a young age and not having your father around has all the makings for a young man heading towards a lifestyle of anger and destruction, and one he might regret. On the other, it can make you stronger in the sense that he can channel the loss and pain into something constructive, mainly his music. Sandrea Williams was one of the three teens hit in the hell of at least 22 bullets that came from two guns. A 17-year-old male friend and a 15-year-old boy were both shot in the leg and were in stable condition. Sandrea, called Bro Bro by her friends, had left the neighborhood, presumably to get away from the drama, was back briefly to visit family and friends when two people emerged from the alley and began firing indiscriminately at the crowd of about 20 teens standing and talking with each other on the corner. Chopper 6 over the scene, someone opened fire, missed their intended target, and hit two teenagers. A 17-year-old girl has been killed. A 16-year-old boy is now in the hospital at Penn Presbyterian. We do not know that individual's condition. This happened 25 minutes ago, perhaps even a little less, and we don't know if the shooter is in custody but a tragic situation tonight in West Philadelphia. Make sure we found the guy, right? Okay. Well, I just started work, and I got to stand in the rain. Have a good day, sir. Have a good day. Another one of Buck's friends he would lose what happened two years later when fellow rapper and friend D4M Schiano was shot and killed on the 1400 block of 61st Street. Being such a small neighborhood, Schiano ended up in enemy territory and was caught slipping. The references and disses to this fallen O to the 4 slash D4M member were numerous and heavy. Get back for Ski was almost immediate as the very next day, a 616 member was shot and killed on 63rd in Nassau. According to police, three people were shot on the 6100 block of Nassau Road on Sunday, July 5th, 2020. At 8.20 p.m., Philadelphia police responded to the scene and located Angelo Walker suffering from a gun wound. Police placed him in their patrol vehicle and rushed him to Lincoln Hill Hospital. Despite efforts by the hospital staff to save his life, Angelo died that night. Killed over the weekend. 
was a 15-year-old. His name, Angelo Walker. He played football at Frankfurt High. Holiday weekend has not only left a family grieving, but an entire football team. His coach tells me he, has a, he had a promising future that was cut short. Bill Seitzma tells us Angelo Walker was known as Ruski. At least that's what his teammates would call him at Frankfurt High School. Coach Bill says the 15-year-old running back and defensive back was known to joke around. As a coach, you want to keep your players safe. You work hard to keep your players safe. I, I do everything in my power to keep my players safe, and it still happens. Another name Bucks mentions a lot is one of his fallen members, Lil Buka. Seen sitting here with Bucks for this interview. Buka had appeared in many of O to the Four's videos and even had aspirations to enter the rap game himself. But those dreams wouldn't come to fruition because on December 27th, 2020, Sabir, Buka Mac, and Frank Tooley Smith, one of Buck's big bros, not his blood brother, were in a car when at about 6.40 p.m. police found the two inside a white Chrysler on South 51st Street near the King Sessing Recreation Center. 21-year-old Tooley and 15-year-old Buka were transported by the responding officers to Penn Presbyterian Medical Center. Lil Mayor, since a very young age, decided rap was going to be his way out. You know, you know, that shit been bad. Growing up, he resided on North 76th Street in Overbrook Park. Without his father's presence in his life, Mayor too turned to the streets for guidance and had dropped out before he could finish high school. Mirror, like every other fallen member I've talked about, can be seen in music videos with Bucks suggesting they were close. On Thursday, March 11th, 2021, at around 3 p.m., four people were shot on the 1400 block of North 76th Street. Tamir Brown had been shot multiple times. Unfortunately, Tamir died from his wounds that evening. This incident was covered more in my I Mean Hurts video. I mean was later arrested and charged in this case, but is innocent until proven guilty. three others fighting for their lives after a shooting in Overbrook Park. It happened in the 1400 block of North 76th Street. Police say a 24-year-old was killed, a 30-year-old, 19-year-old, and 16-year-old critically injured. Police Commissioner Daniel Outlaw says the victims had already been driven to the hospital before officers arrived on scene. One person is... Lil 60 was another of Buck's friends and collaborators. It's Lil 60. 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 You know I get busy you know I get with my black boots and my black dick. My black, dick. black boots on and my black dick. My black dick. A lot of people were starting to connect with Low 60s music, and fans across the city were devastated at the news of his passing. Low 60s, which was caught on video, perfectly displays the callous disregard for human life being expressed right now in this city. The video shared by police shows a 23-year-old victim and his 3-year-old son getting into a black Nissan on the 1600 block of North 55th Street just after 2 p.m. It happened around 2.20 p.m. on Saturday the 19th. Uh, adult male walking up with his young son uh, approached a dark-colored Nissan vehicle up the street. You'll see it zoom in in a little bit. And as the juvenile male and the adult male were getting into the passenger side, that white SUV rolls down the street. It stops just past the black, uh, the black Nissan. Two males are going to jump out of that white SUV on either side of the car and immediately begin to shoot. So. Glock fresh out the box, I add the switches automatic. Y'all say Glock fresh out the box, but y'all still play with Gen 3s. Man, lay low fool. Young and shit a Lil Bucks is a talented rapper. His energy and aggression shows a ton of potential. When you lose numerous friends and family to gun violence before your brain has a chance to properly develop emotionally, the outcomes can be predictable.
If I could give Lil Bucks any advice, it would be to take that rap money and get as far away from the city as possible. I'm hoping he has people around him telling him the same thing. Move out to the sticks and come back to shoot your music in the hood or bring your camp where you are and shoot the videos there. The public wouldn't know any difference. And your ops opinions are the last ones that should matter. So when you hear that chatter of Bucks is never in the hood and he's scared to come back and all that, fuck it, who cares? Your health and wealth are intact and that's all that matters at the end of the day. When everyone around you on both sides of the war are losing their life and you've got innocent children getting shot, that should be all the warning you need that nothing but trouble lies ahead. I personally listen to all kinds of rap music, including drill rap. My playlist has artists of all shapes and sizes, but I'm conflicted because on one hand, seeing what's rapped about play out right in front of you on the news every night, I feel like I'm contributing to the problem in a sense by supporting these artists. On the other hand, I listen for the skill and talent that I know might get these brothers out the hood one day. Meek Mill tweeted, I'll get all the main big artists in Philly a deal if they put them bodies behind them. Got some hot young boys in my city, but they all beefing. There was a lot of meaning behind that tweet and I speculate he was talking to a few specific people. But that applies here to people like Bucks because with his buzz and attention, I'm sure labels are paying attention. What I didn't know at the time was that one month earlier, his associates were involved in one of the most talked about incidents in the past three years. Coincidentally, two months later, I released a video called 100 Shots Fired on the 4th of July, detailing this exact incident. Mahmoud and Johnson Jr. were shot and killed. A 16-year-old girl was also injured in the incident. The girl was hospitalized in stable condition with gunshot wounds to her legs and back. Police ran out a number of evidence markers, putting number 104 on a piece of paper on one marker at the scene. Bullet holes could be seen in the buildings and cars nearby. Sarkar was 23 years old, an entrepreneur, and wasn't involved in the streets as far as I know. And the same could be said for Salahuddin. So even if the young leaders in the community are unsafe, then we have a problem that goes beyond just simply not getting involved in the street life. As you can see, in this city that doesn't always save you, there are problems that started decades ago before rap music and social media. At the time I released the Sir Castle video, I had a pretty good idea of who was involved in the shooting. But for obvious reasons, I didn't include that information in the video. There are a couple reasons for that, but the main one is, I'm not a police officer. I don't do police work. I'm not on the police payroll. I'm not gonna put someone's name in a crime on YouTube. As we all know, rappers these days will do the police's job for them. He ain't see that blueberry bean that's on him. Four niggas in that high, the weird by the spend. Four cameras boxing nigga, and we overcook your Damn, rest in peace, I would've paid for a hoodie. The he ain't see that blueberry bean that's on him. And the, I would've bought a hoodie line. Really bothered me. In 2021, Philadelphia had 562 murders. For the most part, the people killed were involved in some sort of actions that put their life at risk. Either being involved in prior homicides, siding with certain sets, being in music videos and songs, or even pictures dissing the dead. There are also a lot of people that just got caught up close to the action. Sir Queso was a different story. Here is a young man that did everything right. He kept his nose clean, stayed out the way, and was giving back to his community as an entrepreneur and wasn't involved in the streets as far as I could tell. He did know some people from the neighborhood and throughout the city, but that's not a crime or against any street code. So all that violence that day was over some shit that Sir Queso had nothing to do with. This incident really changed my outlook on Lil Bucks. In my first video, I took it kind of easy on him because he was a literal kid, still 17. But now that he's a grown ass man nearing his 20s, he is fully responsible for his own actions. Speaking of being responsible for your actions, I wouldn't feel comfortable speaking about Bucks and countless other talented rappers of anything but disappointment. Yes, he's hot, he can spit, 
Yes, he's doing numbers right now, one of the most talked about in the city. These aren't my kids, but if they were, they would have been straightened out a long time ago. You gotta catch these kids as young and as early as 10 years old sometimes. A lot of the times, when they reach 15 to 16, it's too late if the streets already got a hold of them. At 16 to 17, Bucks was already rapping about murder at O to the 4. The gang, he claims. He was already getting arrested for guns and wearing bulletproof vests. He was already getting high and losing numerous friends to the streets. So I knew by the time I was making my video, he was past my reach. Any old head involved in his life had already led him in the wrong direction. Right, uh, uh, all girls, I doors. I saw police search work at the f the ground. <laughs> Lil Bucks has the talent to get signed and get the f out of Philly. But he seems more interested in hood hopping and making himself a target. All I can do is shake my head in embarrassment as I watch another talented young black man make wrong decision after wrong decision. And all the feedback he's been getting from his fans and all these other bloggers is encouraging his behavior. The main people I get worried about are his fans. Young, impressionable teenagers. Young boys that think anything Bucks does is cool or thorough. It's not. This and the dead is suicidal and one of the stupidest and most pointless decisions you can make. It's the main driving factor, I think, of excess deaths that wouldn't have happened otherwise. What I mean by that is if you look at the number of homicides in Philly over the past 10 years, it's always hovered between 250 and 350 murders per year. But recently, that number has risen dramatically. One of the main factors, I would argue, is the drill culture of diss and dead people which roped so many more people into the beef because of the music videos and social media. You don't know how many lyrics I hear that say shit like, if I see you in the pic with them, you're a target too, or something to that effect. The whole underground culture of the encouragement of violence is insane and ass backwards. This whole Instagram page is dedicated to quoting and keeping the score of the beefs. Like someone took the time out of their day to write shit like, Blumberg is up 3-2 to two on the zoo, what's gonna happen next? Or post people's pictures with their rank, meaning the number of people they killed. I can't get over this aspect of our culture. It's sick and it's twisted, and unfortunately the rappers and gangs play right into it. Commenting on these pages saying, you didn't get the score right, or my rank should be higher. Bro, who is as kids losing, bro? Who is losing? Bro, check the score before y'all say dumb ass like that, bro. But we not even gonna get in all that, bro. Y'all gotta check the score, bro. Like, come on, bro. This man got turned, bro. Check the score, bro. Been getting fried. I ain't gonna know what. Okay. CCK is a click up of different blocks from West Philadelphia and South Philly. They claim each other's wrecks, and it gives rappers more bad people to diss. The way things are going in the Philly underground rap scene is extremely disappointing. These young boys search for approval from each other like their life depending on it. And in a weird way, it does. Message to the members of O2-4. Do you like that name? How about go to the jail? The prisoner has a message for a group that he says is causing mayhem on the streets. Investigators say members have been involved in numerous shootings. Today, the DA's office referenced the arrest and conviction of two of the group's members who were charged and convicted in two retaliatory shootings in West Philadelphia back in 2018 and 2019. One of those shootings left an innocent 54-year-old man injured. Today we want to send a very clear message to the members of O2-4. You like that name? How about go to the jail? Because that is where you're going to go. I don't just mean... Krasner also said there have been 333 homicides so far this year, and that's up three... The attention seeker behavior is at an all-time high, and it doesn't seem to be slowing up. The main point in making this video was to update my story on Lil Bucks and show the dangerous path he is on. If something drastic doesn't happen soon, like a move across the country or a turn to Jesus or something, I don't see this type of behavior changing because he's rewarded for acting this way. People look at my page as encouraging the violence or stirring up the beef, 
but in all reality, if I never heard another drill song, it will actually make me happy. Rappers like Lil Bucks can find a different route in rap if that's the direction he wants to go. All in all, I see nothing but trouble ahead in drill rappers' futures. How many times are we gonna open up Instagram and see this person shot or this rapper shot or this rapper killed? I guess it's just gonna keep on happening until this this younger generation extincts themselves or I, I don't really don't know the solution, but it's very discouraging to watch. Gang bus tonight. Five accused members are off the streets. The district attorney's office says the group was behind several shootings over the past two years. Madeline Wright is live right now at police headquarters with a search for three additional suspects. Madeline? Good evening, Jessica. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office says that a small number of people is responsible for a large amount of violence here in the city. And now some of those accused gang members are behind bars. Today, I caught up with the grieving mother of one of the victims. It's very inquisitive, very um just always wanted more. A champion track star and A-plus student is how Nadisha Williams remembers her 15-year-old son, Antonio Walker. Authorities say Antonio was walking with his cousin on Pentridge Street in West Philadelphia to meet some friends back in March 2021, when someone in a car pulled up and opened fire, killing Antonio and leaving his mother shattered. Every second of the day has been complete torture. Authorities believe Anthony Lacey Woodson is among those responsible for Antonio's death. Williams describes the moment she found out he was taken into custody. They called his father on Friday and um, he called me and I was just shaken because I honestly, it's almost two years I've really kind of lost hope in the you know judicial system. Um, and this just let me know that the cops are working. The Philadelphia DA's office says Lacey Woodson and four others are responsible for multiple shootings across the city and were arrested. Three other suspects are still at large. Authorities say all eight suspects are members of the 02 to 4 gang. This is a big swing taking against a horrible group that for too long has caused un incalculable pain to the good residents of the city of Philadelphia. As for Nadisha Williams, the arrest of her son's alleged killer means she can close out the year with justice. I have another older son and another younger son that I worry for every single day. This eases a little bit of the worry for me. In March of 2021, Philadelphia police arrested Deshaun Packer along with Devin Bryant, Xavier Venny, and Sabir Scott for their alleged involvement in a series of retaliatory shootings across West and Southwest Philadelphia in 2018 and 2019. Using ballistics evidence, surveillance footage, cell phone data, and social media posts, investigators linked these individuals to seven incidents, including a double shooting and later a triple shooting. The arrest and press conference were an attempt to underscore the city's reliance on digital footprints and combating gun violence, as well as trying to show the public that law enforcement was actually arresting people tied to the out-of-control violence that, to this day, plagues the streets of Philadelphia. To hold those activities against you in a court of law, if you want to call yourself or associate with Hilltop, Northside, Southside, Pit Boys, PNB, you can expect also be, to be associated with SCI Greaterfoot, SCI Mahanoy, the county jails, and a whole bunch of the other SCIs, if not federal prison, for the kinds of violent activities that tear our society apart. We were able to identify five groups that were driving violence within the neighborhoods of Southwest and West Philadelphia. Those groups primarily associate with the areas of 60, 60th and Lansdowne, 64th and Callow Hill, 62nd and Callow Hill, 60th and Market, 66th and Lansdowne, 61st and Jefferson, and the 56th and Market and 60th and Spruce areas. We found that those groups were engaged in, in, a, in violence of escalation, fueled by ongoing shootings as well as social media and in something as simple as schoolyard disagreements. These are not, as the DA said, these are not the conflicts that you may be used to hearing about over turf, over drugs. These are fueled by disagreements which are exacerbated by social media posts, online video, music video posts, 
and insults to the memories of homicide victims and shooting victims that are members of these groups. I tried. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell him to get with me. Get with me. He got hit with the shit that hit with me. No boy, pick your man the fuck up. Pick your fuck up. Yeah, I'm tearing up. Get up there. We pull right down the aisles, Bob, big and my shit like Nobody slipping, no. bro, bro, died three years ago, no. so how y'all niggas no. fix it? Oh, I'm a low little cotton and duke no. They don't know who did it, man, them boys don't know the shit no, no, no. Little bucks see a shot, they like, oh no, that's a cold raid on the floor, it's a go though I see one mirror, then I got a lot of FOMO Hit him four times, I like what you want to flow for Four times fast, he get hit up with a fofo. -fo. Four five, hit his four A with bro, bro, nigga got that long Niggas know just how we bumming You know your bro is out there lagging that day just for nothing I should start dumping, try to take fight, think he trip on something You know them fixers get involved and we gon' blick on something That's how we coming in, it ain't no Three men surrounded a house in West Philadelphia around 2 a.m. Two in the front, one in the back. Then they pulled out guns and started firing. Fifteen bullets in all. Neither of the two people inside was hit, but shots shattered windows and entered a back bedroom before the shooters ran away. Surveillance footage of that 2018 incident was shown on 6ABC as police searched for lead, and according to court documents, the Sean Packer took notice. I'm leaving Philly tomorrow too, bro, he texted a friend, sending a link to the news story, along with laughing emojis. I'm on the news, three different shootings on camera, he said. The Sean Packer, or Shiz, was right, he was on the news along with Devin Bryant, Xavier Vinny, and Sabir Scott. Prosecutors detailed that series of events to a grand jury in March of 2021, saying Packer was one of the men who fired into the house because there was a bounty for shooting at it. And at a news conference in West Philadelphia, authorities said the incident was one of seven back and forth shootings that Packer and the three other men committed in the area in 2018 and 2019, part of an ongoing feud between 0 to the 4 and 616, among other groups, what they called street groups, that left nine people wounded, including an eight-year-old boy who was struck in the mouth by a stray bullet. All were members of either 616-661 or the Fixers, formerly Hilltop, or were members of 0 to the 4 or other smaller sets and blocks from around West and Southwest Philly. A lawyer for Devin Bryant, who prosecutors said was arrested in Louisiana in January of 2021 and extradited back to Philadelphia, faced charges for the April 10th, 2018 non-fatal shooting of a 19-year-old. Prosecutors said the investigation was built using evidence including surveillance video, social media posts, text messages, YouTube videos, and cell phone records. 643 now. Philadelphia, like most big cities, is in a crisis of teenage gunfire. So far this year, 128 children have mm. been shot, at least 18 killed. More and more prosecutors say social media is either playing a role or providing key evidence from threats online to the reality of gunfire. NBC 10's Randy Gyllenhaal, he kicks off our series on the impact of social media on youth gun violence. I heard boom booms. November 2018, West Philadelphia. Right here, right here. Gunfire tore up this block as an eight-year-old boy was hit by a stray bullet. His mom watched helpless. I grabbed my son because I seen blood, picked him back up. Mom, I was hit, I was hit, I was hit. The targets of that drive-by were teenagers, and early on, police had a hunch that this was part of an ongoing feud. The police say it's possible a social media beef led to last night's shooting. It's been almost five years now. The bullet holes are still here, but the shooter, Deshaun Packer, is now in prison. Prosecutors say this is one example of young people feuding online with their beef spilling into reality. This feud essentially starts over a social media. Assistant DA Jeff Palmer on the Gun Violence Task Force says so often lately, social media is like brush fire. The flames have been fanned on social media. So that's really taken a lot of these feuds to the next level and, and led to a lot quicker retaliation. 
This feud began in the summer of 2018. Police say one group near 64th and Callahill went on Instagram Live, and then one of their rivals, just a few blocks away, hopped on the chat and started trash talking, split screen. It's a big thing to go on social media and insult the memory of a group's uh, deceased member. Once you go on Instagram Live, they're coming for you. It led to three shootings that summer and fall. Prosecutors obtained Instagram data. These are Instagram direct messages. Showing the accused shooter, Deshaun Packer, posting pics with a similar gun inside a similar car used in that drive-by. So we were able to use these public Instagram posts. Cases like this are now somewhat routine at the task force. Unknown just how much of the city's gunfire has Genesis online, but teens here say juvenile beefs are quite public. For to be happening on Instagram, Snapchat, and all these other apps, it's making it worse. The DA's office points to root causes of violence like poverty, plus a surge of guns on the street, and now daily disputes are happening at the speed of apps. But now everybody's saying, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? And feeding this endless cycle of retaliation. Coming up tomorrow, the impact of this violent rhetoric as young people see it scrolling their phones. It's like it's a TV show. Yeah, like it's a soap opera. And what role violent lyrics play with school starting in just two weeks. Black murder and music is normal. And Ballistics evidence also showed that the same firearms were used in several of the incidents, according to grand jury presentment. The indictments included the wounding of the eight-year-old boy, as I mentioned earlier, who was in his house on the 6,000 block of Ludlow Street on November 25, 2018, when a stray bullet came through the exterior wall and struck him in the mouth, the grand jury presentment said. Prosecutors said Packer, a member of the group from 61st and Jefferson Streets, sometimes known as the Fixers, was one of the people who fired. They said the shooters had been targeting two other boys, ages 15 and 16, who were struck on the street and who were members of a rival group. The grand jury presentment from March 2021 says social media photos, text messages, and videos posted online sometime showed the men discussing the violence or flaunting weapons that authorities later found during searches. Deshaun Packer was charged in the nine fatal shootings of seven people. That includes the one incident from November 2018 that we just talked about in which three people were shot. 22-year-old Xavier Vinny was charged along with Packer for a 2018 non-fatal double shooting. Vinny, along with 24-year-old Sabir Scott, was also charged with the July 2019 non-fatal shooting of a 54-year-old. Devin Bryant was charged with the April 2018 non-fatal shooting of a 19-year-old. That press conference in March of 2021 was the beginning of the end for what would later become CCK. As month after month, year after year, members would go to prison, or even worse, be killed on the street. Culminating in, by the time February 2023 rolled around, Every notable member that is still alive except one mayor is sitting in jail or in prison at the moment. That includes lead rapper Lil Buck. You told you 0-2 to 4. You said you're going to go to jail. 0-2 to 4 is going to go to the jail. We said, did you hear what ABA Palmer said? There's not much of you left. That's why you're starting CCK or you're in CCK, well, CCK is going away. And as for 524, we're gonna close your cell door when it comes to- Oh, oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. They know how we rockin', it's PMX, them big blockers. Oh, uh, no. niggas mad, cause what's his name, a pack? He ain't no soldier, uh, big blockers. You niggas not posting up, so how y'all big blockers? Okay. Gun violence continued to rage across Philadelphia in June of 2021, three months after that original press conference, leaving a dozen people shot and two dead in less than two hours, according to the Philadelphia Police Department. I mentioned that O2-4 and 616 were in a bloody feud. At the same time, O to the Four was beefing with another set called JBE or 524. They went by Big Blockers or Spaghetti Gang, which goes from 52nd to 54th and King Sessing Ave. 
Sir Savage was a fairly well-known drill rapper from around 2020, 2021. He was made popular for his back and forth disses with Lil Bucks, One Mirror, and O to the Four. By FNP, we paid the city rent. Fuck spaghetti, turn this shit to red lobster. Nigga, you a kid, bro, outside his crib between the lamp. One, two, three, four, your homies in my fonta. Niggas not posting up, so how y'all big bloggers? We drink pain in the city red about my homie. Bring with the man all on that banner, bullets gave that nigga cancer. My name all on that track, try to say on the low. While the public could view this view from the outside, law enforcement would use subpoenas of social media accounts and cell phone records, and also ballistics recovered from crime scenes to get a better view of the action. In December of 2022, the DA held another press conference, this time with the announcement of more of the government's dismantling of the gang O to the Four. Following a nearly two year investigation, the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office said it has charged five people and issued warrants for the arrest of three others for their roles in trafficking guns and committing at least five separate shootings as part of the ongoing beef and drama in West Philly. Anthony Lacey Woodson, known as Pistol P, and Jalen Mickens, known as Skip, were arrested in December of 2022 and charged with murder and related crimes in the deaths of Sir Carr Johnson Jr. and Salahuddin Mahmoud, who were fatally shot during a 4th of July barbecue in 2021. Around 100 people were gathered with their friends and family on 60th Street, celebrating the opening of Johnson's new clothing store, when prosecutors say Lacey Woodson, Mickens, and two others emerged from a car and fired more than 100 bullets at the store. Afternoon, Philadelphia police released dramatic new video of a 4th of July shooting that left two dead. Police say just after 10.30 p.m., four men with handguns arrived on the unit block of North 60th Street in West Philadelphia in a dark gray colored sedan. The men then got out, opened fire, striking two men and two women. Then they got back in the car and fled the scene. A 21-year-old man and 23-year-old man did not survive. Two women suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Pistol P has an uncle named Tooley. Frank Smith, or Tooley, was killed, along with another young man named Buka, who was only 15 years old at the time, in December of 2020. Both were close friends of Lil Bucks. They were killed, allegedly, by 524 members, according to police. A man and a teenage boy were critically injured after a shooting in the King Sessing area of Southwest Philadelphia. Eyewitness news on the 1200 block of South 51st Street around 7 o'clock tonight. Police say the 21-year-old was shot multiple times. A 16-year-old was shot in the head. No one has been arrested yet. Trevin Johnson, or Baby, who associates with 524, was charged with murder, attempted murder, conspiracy, and related charges for his roles in a double shooting that occurred on the 5900 block of Lansdowne Avenue and another double shooting with one person dying that occurred all on the same day. The second shooting on the 4600 block of Walnut Street on June 29th, 2021. A 21-year-old and a 19-year-old were shot and seriously wounded when Johnson and two other shooters later identified as 524 associates Kenneth Wilson or Skeezy and Jasir Nelson, or Sir Savage, arrived in a red Honda Civic. They exited the vehicle, opened fire, and then fled in the same vehicle. Surveillance video captured the shooting, as well as the make and model of the getaway car. Investigators recovered 24 9mm fired cartridge casings and 12 762 fired cartridge shells from the Lansdowne Avenue crime scene. Johnson, Wilson, and Nelson are also alleged to have committed a homicide and non-fatal shooting later that day when the three allegedly targeted a 36-year-old woman and a 33-year-old woman who were sitting out front their residence. When Philadelphia police responded to the 4600 block of Walnut Street, they found a 36-year-old deceased and a 33-year-old shot, wounded in her legs and arms. The gunman had fired over 20 shots at the woman. The spent cartridge casings recovered at the scene matched the ballistics located at the Lansdowne Avenue crime scene earlier that day. Investigators subsequently determined that a total of four firearms were used between the two crime scenes. 
some of the latest victims of Philadelphia's violence. So Steve Keeley is live at Penn Presbyterian. And even though this, this story is so tragic, also nine people total shot overnight. Well, it's actually 15. Um, you can, it depends on what time you start the overnight, but 15 since the commander I talked to started his shift, which is before the sun goes down. And uh, he was at the scenes of three people killed and I'll get to them. Uh, but I'm gonna start with actually positive news and all this mayhem because we're at Penn Presbyterian where we were with uh, the six-year-old son of the sister who survived. And we met him when police raced back whether another guy came back to the same scene with a gun. And we didn't know, one cop said he, somebody might be back here to finish the job or looking for whoever they intended to kill. So uh, me and the 16-year-old came over here, our live truck followed and then he got some good news and came out and told me that his mom is going to be okay and may actually get released as early as today. And so he's going to try to go home and sleep somehow. And this is where we are now. This is the video of the 46 and Walnut scene, a nice renovated apartment building. They were outside because it's so hot and they were trying to keep cool. The 33 year old mother of the 16 year old, the one that survived, lives there. Her 36 year old sister was just over visiting. They thought, let's hang out. Uh, the 33-year-old son that we went with was inside playing video games. And he hears over the sound of his loud video games what he thinks is fireworks. And he goes, nope, it's too loud, it's getting too loud, and it's too long. And then suddenly his mom runs in screaming, bleeding. He sees the bullet wound that's in her arm. She's shot in the legs as well. They run in the back for cover. And then he finally goes out and he sees his aunt shot in the eye, in the face, in the chest, in the back, on the steps, uh, bleeding badly. The police arrive. They rush both sisters to the hospital. One survives, one does not. 21 shots were fired from two separate caliber semi-automatic weapons. Several of the spent shell casings appear to be rifle rounds because they're much longer and appear to come from a rifle. And the other spent shell casings are clearly from a semi-automatic handgun. So we know two weapons were used. Due to the fact that the ballistic evidence is so close to where they were sitting, some shell casings on the highway, many shell casings on the sidewalk, and they were struck so many times, it appears that one of them or both may have been the intended target or targets. Police eventually linked one of the nine millimeter handguns used in the shooting to Jasir Nelson or Sir Savage after it was recovered during his arrest. Online photographs also depicted Nelson holding a rifle capable of firing 7.62 rounds. The 7.62 fired cartridge casing also matched another firearm that was recovered from Kenneth Wilson after his arrest. Kenneth Wilson and Jasir Nelson are facing murder, attempted murder, and related firearms charges stemming from their involvement in these shootings. They are also currently serving time in state incarceration for commercial robbery after the Gun Violence Task Force previously had a successful investigation and prosecution. Back to Pistol P. As documented in court records, he would try to get back for Thule on the 4th of July night in 2021. As I said earlier, when Sir Queso Johnson and Salahuddin Mahmoud were killed, the shooting at Sir Queso's clothing shop wasn't the only incident police say O to the four was involved in trying to get back for Thule. In January 2021, less than a month after Thule's death, Pistol P and three other members went to a house on Paris Street, which they believed to be a party where 524 members were at. Multiple shots were fired into the first and second floors from the outside. Some inside the home then began shooting toward the outside, police said. A 34-year-old woman was struck once in the arm. She was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police found approximately 20 shell casings across the street from the homes. 15 shell casings were found inside the home. Got the drop and they hit shit. I know that made them real, man. One of the four people in the car that night was Fabian Crary, who would go on to cooperate with authorities according to Lil Buck, which is probably why he's the only one not pictured in the news report. Authorities said Antonio Walker was shot in the chest and arm around 7 p.m. near the 5200 block of Pentridge Street. He ran west after being shot and collapsed on the sidewalk, according to the Philadelphia Police Chief Inspector Scott Small. Antonio had been walking home from playing basketball at a nearby playground. Investigators 
trying to figure out who shot and killed another 15-year-old in the city's King Sessing section. Police say someone opened fire from the back of a silver Ford Taurus last night in an apparently random act of violence. Action News reporter Corey Davis talked to the victim's parents who say none of this makes any sense. Antonio Walker Jr. lost his life out here at South 52nd and Pinterest Street. His parents are telling us that the gun violence he fell victim to had nothing to do with who he was as a person. Antonio Walker Jr.'s parents are keeping this picture close, hanging on to everything that reminds them of their 15-year-old son. The loss of a kid, I will be mourning for the rest of my life. No parent should ever have to bury their kid. It's my only son. Antonio's life was taken while walking with someone down South 52nd near Pentridge Street last night around 7 in King Sessing. His life was too brutally, brutally cut short. Philadelphia police say someone driving by stopped and started shooting. Antonio suffered fatal injuries. And yesterday was one of the first nice days we had in a while. And it's crazy because I was actually interviewed eating at a restaurant yesterday. And my son wanted to go hang with his cousin. And I felt nothing wrong with that. His parents tell us he was dedicated to school and did not hang out in the streets. All he wanted to do was get back to school, um, you know, finish his education and become the professional athlete that he was. He worked out every single day. Here he is with his track medals around his neck. His mom says Antonio was a ninth grade track star at Freire Charter School in Center City. She wants him remembered that way rather than just another number. My son is another number of the, the this large rising number of homicides. My son is part of that number. It's devastating. He, his future was so bright so bright. Investigators are telling us they did not find a weapon and are still working to gather more clues. In the meantime, Antonio's parents say they are planning his memorial service. On the 4th of July, 2021, two additional shootings happened before the cookout on 60th Street. Pistol P and Skip are linked to all three shootings. There was a shooting on the afternoon of July 4th, 2021 on 54th Street where two people were shot. Then, a few hours later, a 15-year-old boy was shot in his leg and foot on a 6,000 block of Walton Street in West Philadelphia at 10.36 p.m. that Sunday night. Sakar's business is a three-minute drive from the part of Walton Street where the 15-year-old was shot. All these shootings, including the one on Paris Street where the 34-year-old woman was shot, are tied together through ballistics, cell phone records, and social media posts, according to police. Pistol P was charged with two counts of murder, criminal conspiracy, and four counts of aggravated assault. Pistol P is additionally charged with the other shootings on the 4th of July, attempted murder, criminal conspiracy, and related offenses for the non-fatal shooting of the two people on 54th Street, and aggravated assault and criminal conspiracy for the non-fatal shooting on Walton Nab of the 15-year-old boy. Pistol P is additionally charged with aggravated assault, criminal conspiracy, and related offenses for a non-fatal shooting at the 3800 block of Paris Street on January 16th, 2021. And finally, Pistol P is also charged as part of an alleged straw purchasing conspiracy with four counts of VUFA, which stands for the violation of the Uniform Firearms Act, or in plain English, an illegal gun. Skip, or Jalen Mickens for his part, pled guilty and was sentenced to 22 and a half to 50 years in prison for his roles in the shooting. Pistol P is set to go on trial later this year. In January and February of this year, 2024, Sonny Goon and Young Liv were arrested for weapons violations and are currently fighting those charges behind bars. Bucks, Sonny Goon, Livy, Pistol P, and Skip are all sitting in jail whether it be for gun charges or murder, everyone was headed down the same path these last five years. Some, like Lil Bucks, had the clout to have a nice run at least. I'm not saying it's completely over for Lil Bucks or CCK, but all this gang gang drill rap sh is over with. When Bucks gets out, he has a serious decision to make on which way to take his life. Same with everyone else mentioned here. When I say it's over for CCK, I mean that it will never be as it was back in 2020 or 2021. Back then, everyone was out and about and doing their thing and running their movie. And then, 
they made the decision to terrorize their neighborhoods and broadcast their beef to the entire internet. Lives lost, families ruined, and potential careers thrown in the garbage. I hope everyone who has watched this play out over the last few years is taking note. These beefs, a lot of the time, start over fist fights, unchecked emotions, which lead to guns, which leads to shattered families and long prison stretches or cemetery. I'm going to leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. This has been American Confidential. Until next time, be safe.